What's happening? This is the David Banner Podcast. Regina, I don't feel like screaming today, so Regina. <laughs> Regina! There you go, Scott. I got your back. One bro. more time. Regina! <laughs> Sali, what's happening? Yo, what's going on, bro? Regina, what's happening with you? What's up? Hey, Tommy. Oh, you know, hold on. So, Dirt Bad Corey. You know, we have... You got a dirt cam now. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all know about the dirt cam? <laughs> What's the dirt cam? It's oh, a dirt cam. Oh, shit, son. Oh, you do got, got a, dirt a dirt cam. cam. And there dogs and shit over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dear. So, Sally, what's going on with you this week, man? How you doing? How you been? What's up with you? Oh, I'm cool, man. I'm chilling. Ain't nothing major. Ain't nothing major? Nah, ain't nothing major, uh, man. Everything's slow motion. Scott Parker, what's up with you? I want to give a rest rest in peace to my uncle John Morgan Jr. We buried him over the weekend. Rest in peace to a great man, like a second father to me. Regina, what's up with you? David Banner, they- uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I, I guess, I, I, Corey, I guess we'll go to you. What you doing? <laughs> I'm just chilling. You know me. I work my life away, but love every second of any, it. Um, any uh, pet cemeteries? Uh, Dog stories. <laughs> wow. Any, uh... Fuck them dogs. <laughs> any Dirtbag Chronicles? Ain't no Dirtbag Chronicles today, you know? Yeah. What you do on Christmas Eve, Corey? So on Christmas Eve... Oh, funny thing, though. My girl cooked... This is the first time she's ever cooked, like, a, a Christmas meal or whatnot. So we were kind of kind of nervous. But <laughs> she, she, she threw down. She All right, Corey, it. you go... Uh, you got, I'm going to warn you before I ask on you that question. Cooking for bait? I'm going to warn you before I ask you this question. <laughs> All right. All right. On a scale from one to ten, what did how, how was it? I would give it a I would give it a solid eight. Believe it or not, you better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Corey, Corey you are still in the light. Uh, it was funny because if if he if he, if he would have said anything less than an eight, I was like, edit that shit out, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, 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 don't want, I don't want them problems. I right, bet, bet. So we're gonna go into um, the black business today, Regina. You wanna? Tell us about the black I business do. today. Uh, the black business today is Rick Mathis. He is the um, executive director of Black Friday, mm-hmm. which is one of the DVDs in, in the, the God in Box. The God Box, right? Yep. Um, he has done several documentaries. He's also received the 2017 recipient. Um, he is a 2017 recipient of the President Bar- or Barack Obama's <laughs> lifetime. I knew he was going to do that. You, you are such. Regina, just spell it out. B. Just spell it. <laughs> just spell it. <laughs> All right, so right now we're going to be Rick Mathis here. Come on, bro. Such a hater. So, Rick, tell us um, about your businesses, what you do, and um, just in general, man, I am... Um, I am just impressed with all the things that you do as a businessman and just what you believe in um, as a man. Can you explain that to our listeners and followers? Definitely, man. First off, I want to start by thanking you and your crew, man, your team here for uh, sharing your platform with me, man. My name is Rick Mathis. I'm a producer, director of a film series called Black Friday, which you're featured in. And uh, basically what it is, it's a solution-based film series that deals with how we as African Americans value a dollar and the importance of leaving a legacy for the next generation. Mm -hmm. So when that film series, it starts by asking this uh, thought-provoking question that a nine-year-old asked me. Mm -hmm. And that question is, if you die right now, would you leave bills or benefits. Yeah, with the rest of the, this show, I think that's a that's a real question to ask today. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, with that, man, uh, what we what we strive to do is we strive to uh, edu- educate and uh, entertain. You know what I'm saying? Through media. You know, right now, media is uh, the most profound and 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 powerful tool that we have. Mm-hmm. You know, it programs the masses. And uh, I know you use, you had a, a, an awakening, I, I know you said uh, earlier in your career, uh, when people were using the N-word, it just had a, an effect on you. Right. And you saw how powerful mass media mm-hmm. is, you know what I'm saying? So why not use that tool to uplift, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, instead of uh, continuing to uh, 
downgrade, yeah, you know, grabbing humanity. it, controlling it, and using it in the opposite way that they do, but using it. Yes, yeah, 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 it's I a agree. powerful tool. So with that, you know, we created these film series. Uh, this one is the one that's featured in the God Box. The here. God Box, yes. Yeah, shout out to the God Box. Pick that up, right. and then we uh, created uh, part two, Black Friday part two, where we uh, travel to Ghana. We travel to Spain and we show the Black Madonna. Yeah. We show people standing in line for four hours to go and pay homage to a Black Madonna that looks like us. Right. We show how the slave trade gave birth to capitalism here in America. Right. Us being the first stock sold on Wall Street. And explain to people who may not know, um, what is the Black Madonna? Man, so the Black Madonna is like the sacred... Um, it's the, really the queen. So that's where the queen of, of England mm -hmm. patterned all of her things after. Mm -hmm. So you have this queen who's making millions of dollars an hour. So she patterned her whole life after the Black Madonna. Okay. Yeah, so that's really who the Black Madonna is. The Black Madonna, you know, this is, we, 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 we live on, uh, this is Mother Earth that we live on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this is a feminine planet. Right. So we really should pay homage to the feminine principle Hey. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a feminine planet. You right. know what I'm saying? The men are the protectors. The men are the, are the visionaries. If you look at nature, right. the women do the work and make sure things are cohesive. Right. The men is the, the, the protector. Right. You know what I'm saying? The visionary. Right. To carry out things. But the women primarily do the work. If you look at the lions and the lioness. Right. You know, you can see it in nature. That's the only thing that really hadn't been tampered with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you look at nature, that's consistent. Right. You know, so those are some of the things that we, uh, but we primarily talk about economics. I don't want to get too far off. Right. But the goal is economics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, money is directly tied to our emotions. Mm -hmm. It affects every aspect of our life. If I give you $500, you happy. Mm -hmm. If you lose $500, you upset. Right. So it's directly tied to our emotions. So how can we not put economics first mm -hmm. when it's the most vital thing in our life, mm -hmm. in this society? You know what I'm saying? Especially Coretta living in a, in a capitalistic society. You yeah, know what Co I mean? Coretta Scott, Coretta Scott King says the thing that got her husband killed was the speech that he did called The Other America. You familiar with that speech? I'm not. I invite all of you to campaign. listen. I invite all of you to listen to that speech. Mm -hmm. It's a speech that Dr. King did right before he was assassinated at uh, Stanford University mm -hmm. back in the '60s. It's called the Other America, and when he switched from civil rights uh -huh. to civil s i l v e r rights yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and started talking about the money, it was like, no, he's too powerful. We gotta take him out. Right. And, and he that was, was to unite all poor people across all nationalities. Exactly. And that was what they deemed to be dangerous. As long as he was just talking to emotional black people, it wasn't no problem. It was no all problem. All we do is saying we shall overcome. Right. Yeah. And you start putting the money in jeopardy. Exactly. Now you, got, now you, in, now you in real and, peril. Yeah. And that's what this is about. You know what I'm saying? With the cell phone, this right here has totally revolutionized the way we think and do business right. in the world. The cell phone has literally turned the world into a village. Mm -hmm. You can now do business with people around the globe mm -hmm. through this. And people are watching their cell phones more than mm -hmm. they watch television. Now. Exactly. Like actually, exactly. you know, box televisions in your front room. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, the coloring book. Yes. The, uh, the kids' I, money book. I, yeah, I think yeah, this is really, oh, really nice. important. So this is the kids' money book. The Kids' Money Book is seven principles that every child should know about money. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the phone has totally revamped the way we do business. Right. So now, the days of working a 40-hour-a-week job for 40 years and retiring with a gold watch and a pension plan is over. Right. If you're not thinking like an entrepreneur, you don't have a product or a service to sell, you're missing the mark. You're hustling back. When you see your boy in there... DB! Do you see this guy yeah, right here? Oh, we got the guy box t-shirt on and everything. <laughs> and look, and look, note the gray beard. Note yeah. the gray beard. Yeah. <laughs> I need yeah. to get so, a few of these. Yeah, definitely. Quite a few. So the, the reason why that was mm -hmm. important is mm -hmm. because similar to our homeboy with Derek Grace, mm -hmm. like we have to start our children out with the things that we because a lot of these um things that seem like they're small concepts or easy concepts. We really didn't get a, a total grasp of these concepts until we were older. So, like, if we could start our children off 
Right. Like where we are now, yeah. imagine them when they become our age. And so I, I love the, the coloring book concept. And when you brought that to my office, I remember when, when, when you had the first mock-up, but when it was just paper. And I was telling you how, uh, how proud I was. And one thing I also like about him, like everything that we do, we always go into counsel with each other. You know, it's about, it's about three or four of us. And like he brought it to me. And the first thing I say, bro, make it bright. Yeah. You know, make it bright. Mm -hmm. uh, our kids, they, you know, especially when we're dealing with video games. And these are the things that we are con competing with with our children's attention. So we have to make sure that the colors are bright. He came back and brightened the colors. I was like, yeah. Hey, got to listen to Big Bro, man. So so where can they get, is there any so, one place that they can get all of your stuff? Yeah, definitely. So uh, what we're doing now is we're revamping the website mm -hmm. because we're making everything digital. Okay. But the website is Black Friday Film Series. Mm -hmm. It's not up right now. You can inbox me or you can email me at blackfridayfilmseries at gmail. Or you can send me a message at Black Friday uh, Film Series on IG. Mm -hmm. But we're revamping everything to make it digital. Like okay. you said, people are doing everything through this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we did the DVDs, right. and we're still doing the DVDs for the older. Mm -hmm. But for to tap into and, and grasp the younger people, right. you know, we got to get them through this cell phone. Okay. You know so do you saying? know what that domain is going to be yet? Yeah, it's BlackFridayFilmSeries.com. Okay, all right, yeah, all right. Everything right. is BlackFridayFilmSeries.com. So we when, keep it when people are looking at this, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, two, three months from now, it'll mm -hmm. already be on there. They won't yeah, have exactly. to worry about it. Okay, yeah, cool, exactly. cool, 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 cool. Exactly. So, so in, in, in closing, bro, mm -hmm. is there anything that you want to tell anybody, any advice that you would give um, for people who want to do something similar? Man, I would say uh, keep the concept simple. You know, I, I coin this Black Friday because you always start with marketing in mind first. Right. If you start with marketing in mind and you identify your market, then it makes the whole story easier. Right. So with Black Friday, I can release Black Friday every year mm -hmm. and it's still a fresh product right. because Black Friday is going to come every year. Now, also, the thing you want to do is you want to tie your product to the calendar. Right. You know, there's a concept that I teach when I'm, when I'm teaching film and I'm, and I'm teaching marketing called the wheel within a wheel within a wheel. And basically what that is is that's the wheels that make things operate. There's a, there's a holiday in every month of the year. And then you have current events. And then you have the age or the time period that we're in. Right. So those are the wheels. Okay. So when you fine-tune those wheels, that helps you to identify your market and better tailor your market so that you can market it to them, and people are buying into what you're doing and your message. Right in my head, I saw the way that watches work mm -hmm. and the wheels it's the on same top thing. of the wheel. It's right, time. right, 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 right. It's time, right, right. baby. So yeah, so you know that's in the last thing, man. With the with the book, uh, one of the principles is to value your time. Mm -hmm. Every day we're given eighty six thousand four hundred seconds. Mm -hmm. That's twenty four hours. What you do with that time not only determines how you live, but it determines how your kids' kids can live. Right. So it's about creating IPs, intellectual properties, that you can now pass on to the next generation. Right. So okay. value your time, man. All right. We appreciate you for coming through, hey, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Rick Mathis, y'all make sure that y'all support him, man, and we thank you again. Definitely. Thanks for having me. All right, Brody. Sally. It's time. <laughs> you can leave my here so the camera uh, slide past them, bro. Let's get it. Sally. Oh, Regina, you gonna do me like that? Oh, sorry. We gonna tell you about the music. I gotta sing. Yes. Sally. There you go. Got the sports and the music. Oh, oh. Sally. You can catch them at a low. You gotta know when to cut it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's always good. Yo, 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 what up, what up? So today on SDE with Sali, I'm going to start. Since, since you know the name SDE, let me go right on into it. Cameron dropped a new album. Okay. I'm a big Cam fan, Purple Haze too. Boy, it took me right back to about like 03, 04 with the way he came with it on there. He even dropped another uh, Losing Weight volume, I mean, part three on that album. Okay. It's that old classic cam. Like, it took me back for real. Like, yeah. it's been on repeat since it dropped. Like, oh. I just been running the whole album. Any standout songs on there? Yeah, really Losing like? Weight, um, Ride This Wave, 
Um, you got the right one. A couple of them on like the whole the whole album bus. Does he have any um concepts like he like like when he first came out with the whole pink thing? Like Cameron usually drops oh, he, a he, wave he, along with the music. He, What's the he, wave? He, he, he back now? with the with the colored whip again. Okay. Yeah, he got yeah he got he got he back using the uh, the whips colored up. It look I think it's like a McLaren or something. He got on the yeah. cover and it's and it's purple and pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, propane dropped a new one too. In case I never speak again, propane from Houston. Mm -hmm. That's real dope. Rock Marciano dropped uh, Marcia Largo. That go hard. And um, them the three I've been riding the most lately right there for the last couple of weeks. So that's what you got for? Yeah, but nah. Remember yesterday we were talking about, um, we were talking about Cube. Right. And we was talking about the discussion about like why we think he don't get the respect he deserve and everything. Mm -hmm. So it had me thinking like far as like other really dope dudes who, who like underrated. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to ask y'all who like one or two people that y'all feel is underrated as rappers that don't get the credit they deserve. Willie D. Willie D. Willie D from the Ghetto Boys was a real, it is a really, really, really dope lyricist. You know, on his own. He can stand on his own. You know, lyric for lyric, track for track. Um, JT Money. Yeah. We talked about we JT talked about Money. We talked about JT yeah. Money, the bitch from the Poison Clan. You know, the music was kind of down south, bass, regional or whatever, but go back and listen to JT Money. JT Lyrics Money can always fucking there. spit. Right. Regina, who would you say? Killer Mike. Killer Mike, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Who else? You say? Mm. You. Oh, thank you. No, I seriously though. No, I appreciate it. I'm, 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 we gonna be on their ass. We gonna, we gonna ride their ass until they say it. I said that. Like from from this point on, from the time I did the hip hop cipher. I was just about to say, if you want to hear some lyrics, go back to that BET cypher. And to the day that I die, I say I won't spit another whack verse. Well, not I, I never kicked a whack verse, but just, I think similar to what Scott pulled me out in the hall today, and he said, let us help you. He's like, bro, like, you know, we know you're not feeling well today. Like, let us, like, sit back. That's why you got a team. That is why you have a team. You know, and... um I'm going to start using that and spending more time, like, focusing. Because before, it wasn't that it, I, I I wasn't lyrical, but I was producing, carrying all the guns, paying for everything. Even when I shot my own movie, it was hard for me to really be a great actor because I'm renting the cameras. I'm thinking about, well, we got to get the cameras you're, back. You're and the, accountant, the grip. Exactly. <laughs> everything. <The> best boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say get, something. Bro. Gonna have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Every, I just see the credits roll and everything. David Banner, David Banner, David Banner. Everything but the fluffer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, but like... Um, what, who did you who who you think you know since we we never really get to ask you that question who you think that's like if I had to pick because one of the reasons why I didn't say mine because I think I didn't want to take one you, of yours but you can say because I got one I think we gonna say the nah, same one no but you go you go you go ahead go ahead A Z okay juvenile and Tila okay yeah them three Tila like, I think they're bust ass like yeah. all three of them is hard um need to get Tila on here I I yeah we got that um. I, I got two. One of mine was going to be Juvenile. Uh -huh. um, but I would say Ludacris. Like, like, people know that he can rap, but I think because he never had no drama, like, lyric for lyric, and anybody who has ever came up against him has been crushed. Like, anybody. And verse for verse, line for line, album for album. And he sold more than most of the people on Def Jam consistently until some of them got names. So, like, for me, I think Ludacris should be, like, way, way up there. And, and they never, ever say his name, you know? And again, like, because me and Sali had this long conversation about Cube. Like, Cube should be on the Rushmore, too. Yeah. Right, right. But Definitely. I think what happened is when, when you get success in other ways, black people take away... Like, just because I'm successful in movies, you shouldn't take away the fact that I was great... In music, I think people do the same thing to Queen Latifah. You know, just because she's so successful over here as a performance group, um, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, I've never seen anybody that had the type of performance that them and Ready Rock C and all of them had. But because Will Smith is Will Smith now, people don't it even talk about him yeah. as, as a, uh, a lyricist. As, as a lyricist. Um, 
I also say Bun B. Definitely. Pe- people know that Bun B is a lyricist, but because of Pimp C's Southern draw, because of all like the theatrics yeah. of Pimp yeah, C Bun in B general. Was the backbone of that. I, I think the that foundation. I think that he gets overshadowed a lot of times, but verse for verse, line for line. Now, I also want to say this. Um we know that Andre 3000 I was gonna say is, that. Is Go ahead, but you go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say I think Big Boy gets overshadowed. Mm-hmm. I think he doesn't get the credit he deserves because he's a dope lyricist. Right. I, but I, I was going to say Andre only in the sense of, I think, to me, Andre is my favorite rapper, period. But, like, people always talk about the fact that he is one of the best lyricists of all time, but I never see him anybody, in anybody's top five. I'm going to tell you where I think the theory behind that comes mm-hmm. from. Because he was always in a group. So it's kind of like when you talk about sports, he didn't win a championship on his own. Yeah. You got to look at it like that. If you stood alone, it'll give you more honus to be held up there. Mm-hmm. Like, people know it, but it's just the fact that it's never just been him by himself running. Well, my, my, only, my only pushback to that is Jordan wasn't Jordan until he got a team around him. Like, because when he went through Detroit and it was just Jordan standing on his own, they broke his ankle. Like, come and bring your ass on through here. We elbow your ass. Like, when he went through the Detroit Pistons. So, I, 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 what, what I see is, like, I think people try to find reasons why to take things away from people. But I, I, I just think... And the other thing is they're not going to give most of these people credit until after they're gone. Right. That's just human just nature, terrible. unfortunately. So, I'm glad we're talking about them now. You know one more person, though? Who's that? Who busts ass. I, you can line up and corrupt. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, yeah. wait, yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and as a whole group, I'm a, you know, I know y'all get tired of me saying this, man, but uh Souls of Mischief, uh that they whole hieroglyphics click to me. Um casual. Um, all in there, man. Like it, it just seemed like people. I used to always say that when people would say that about me as a rapper, they they treat us like we roaches in the room. Like, <laughs> wow. They look and hope that don't nobody else see them and just mm-hmm. be quiet and don't say nothing <laughs> about them. But um, yeah, man. Um, I, I I I appreciate all of those MCs and all of those people. Thank you. So guess what we about to do now? Until we get Scott Parker. It's all switch. Can I have my own song? I, just wanted, I thought you was about the three pumps and a squirt him. I ain't did it in a long time. Thank God. Uh, Last show uh, of the year. Uh, <laughs> it actually disappear. is. Uh-huh. Give uh, him three pumps and a squirt. Oh, that's Scott, what you want? Because the Scott, cam what? shows dirt, huh? <laughs> they messed up your song. Why are you doing a recall on I don't have a song. I, I, don't, I don't have a song. And this was it. We gonna fix that in 2020. I had a song. <laughs> no. Regina. Salia. 2020. Salia and, and Regina. Regina. Stole it. Regina. No. Three pups and a squirt. No. What? Three pups and a squirt. <laughs> Three pups and a squirt. <laughs> 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 what you got for us, uh, Scott? Man, I've been down in the South for the holidays, and uh, they're getting a lot of questions about how to stay healthy through this time of year. And between that and seeing a lot of eating habits and also noticing what's available to us in the hood, food-wise. Mm-hmm. And I did some research a couple of years ago to try to figure out, you know, what, what, what should we as black people be eating? Mm-hmm. Because everybody has different genetics, different body chemistry, and really we should be paying attention to our race and our DNA when it comes to eating. So. Mm-hmm. What I found was, I don't know if anybody's heard of Layla Africa, mm, yes, but there's a great book called African Holistic Health by Layla Africa, and it really speaks about health from a race perspective. But to kind of break it down real plain and simple, I found that it's five things that we as blacks should be avoiding in our diets. Alcohol, sodium, that's why I said that one first, that was for you. So <laughs> alcohol, salt, sugar, uh, nicotine, and stress. Damn, Those right. five things actually the, the affect the first one and the fifth and, one. Right, <laughs> go hand in hand. But those five things affect our DNA and affect our genetics more so than other races. Take sugar, for instance. We get sugar. We get diabetes at three times the rate of Caucasians right. because sugar affects us to a more toxic level than it does other races. So we have to be mindful of that. And if you go in any corner store in the hood, what's in there? Yep, they, alcohol. They had Sugar, a um, story about the um, those dollar stores that are popping yeah. up uh, everywhere, 
and yeah. they showed that there was a st- systemic connection with the with with the places that they were they were putting them in our hood. Yeah. Man, I told you, you know, that day we was talking about it, but it ain't nothing but big ass walk in commissaries. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that is right. And they Tip found out a lot of commissaries. <laughs> You go look at those products, a lot of that stuff you never even heard of the companies where mm-hmm. it comes from. Yeah. They ain't coming from, you know, mm-hmm. the regular companies that you see in the other grocery stores. So and, where is it coming from? And I think also the fact that, and you talk about this a lot. Actually, I think you were the one that taught me about it initially. You already have a food desert. That's right. You know what I'm saying? In a lot of cases, the places that we from, you don't have a grocery store within a five mile. It's not even in right. a walking and in, in, in a five mile ra- uh, uh, radius where people can actually walk to them. So you, what do you have access to? Right. Sugar Alcohol, and salt. sugar, salt, salt. nicotine. Yeah. And then what do they put as a blanket over the whole hood? Stress. Yep. No banks, no grocery stores, subpar health care. That's a recipe to keep us where we and are. And a whole bunch of policemen. A whole bunch of cops putting that stress on you from the minute you leave your house till you come back. Damn. So, again, five things to avoid in 2020. Alcohol, stress, salt, sugar, tobacco. Okay. We own it. But before I go, I oh, got wait, one more oh, thing. Stop. I'm sorry. I bought y'all some gifts. Uh oh. This is all right. Pass this to Regina. Here, Regina. Oh. But shall we open them? Open them. But open Scott. them now. That's for Sali. That's for you. <laughs> Dirtbag Corey. Oh, snap. But Scott. It's a special day for you. Okay. It's a rite of I passage. It was fuck Santa. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that. I thought we said fuck Santa. I said I got y'all some gifts. I didn't say Christmas gifts. Oh, that's true. But oh, I got. I think I know what this is. I got dirt bag Corey his first hey. ABV ah. Word. piece of cutlery. Oh, that's dirt. Nice. This is a rite of passage, Corey. We all carry knives. Yeah. So uh, hey, it's got the glass breaker on it too, in case you get stuck in the. Who whip. just had us with these? This is for you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Rooftop. So let me let me show you something really quick. I got Corey. mine. Just so you know, uh, I had Regina like yeah. about eighty times a day, just open and close like. That's the biggest thing. So if you ever have to open and close it on somebody, you do it so much. Oh, just here. Well, he his ain't the snap, but like yeah, this ring loaded on the back. All right, go ahead. You show him this guy. Mm, Mine, right pop. Yeah. Hey, this was all I was missing. Yeah. You know that? You I got this. everything else. I got guns over. and knives. I was missing this that right here. I ain't never blade. had one of these. Before. But I do. You do it one. I had one in the security. I'm pushing days. that over. You gotta loosen it. That's to you, dirt back. Oh. These are our Negro Behave Sticks. You know what? <laughs> Scott, what makes it so bad is we ain't got shit for you. You never do. I'm a customer. But Scott, let me, let me just let y'all know something. Scott was the one that... Oh, Regina, that's a, that's your new lunchbox. <laughs> no, I knew it, it had something to do with eating. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. He God, got her... Uh, 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 wait till you open it. This shit is a skinny, oh. fat girl. Uh, skinny, fat girl, thermos... Three tiered lunchbox. I can't. Box, I can't baby. with you. I like it though. So yeah. now you, when you steal in Marlowe's food during our breaks, you have some place to hide. And, uh, oh, this is awesome! I got something for the and with chicken, a three the tier, rice. Yeah. The, Scott, you the man for the woman that likes to eat. For the woman that likes. I don't to feel eat. like beatboxing. My head hurts. Nigga, <laughs> 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 with awesome. Gino for the belly. Thank you, Thank you Scott. I better get it. Appreciate it, Scott. Tommy Noble, we ain't got shit for you. Fuck Tommy Noble. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are so (laughs) good. Fuck. (laughs) Yes. No. No, but Scott made sure that every, uh, like, I would always see this, man, whenever there were any women that came around us, man, Scott would always ask him, sister, do you have something to protect yourself with? And if you say no, Scott would pull a knife off of his side and give it to her. And I picked up that practice we done gave away about at least 10 knives. I'm talking about all the knives that, that we have are very expensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's better for us to make sure, because most of us are trained, you know what I'm saying, in, in different forms of martial arts and boxing and et cetera, et cetera. But we have to make sure that uh, our women are protected. And well, I tell you, I don't know if y'all saw that video of the uh, guy trying to snatch the child off the train in New York. I didn't see no. But there was a mother and a child sitting on the train. The mother was sleeping. And the guy tapped the woman a couple of times, and when she didn't wake up, when the door opened, he snatched the kid and ran out on the train what? platform. And the woman woke up, and a bunch of people stopped him. But, uh, you know, if she's by herself, that child is gone. Right. Unless she can run out there and put that knife in his eye socket right. and twist it a couple of times. Right. 
Damn. So, you know, we try to encourage all the people in our in our circle to protect themselves. And if you don't know how, we'll teach you. Yep. Regina? Yeah. You ready? Uh-huh. All right, let's go. Ali got you this time. I got you. Let me tell you all about Regina. <laughs> she knows, she knows all about hoes. Oh, Regina. I never do you like that. Oh, she's got it. I got something for you next. All, all about, about asses. Be yeah, yeah. like, softly. Regina. Hold on, what? What? She Glory she home. Did you say softly? <laughs> I says, no. What you said? Let's keep going. Regina. Regina. All right, Regina, what you got for us? That was so wack. I can start off. Nope, 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 nope. No. Today I'm going to talk about a designer. His name is Stephen Kenlock. Hey, hey. That's my homie. Hey, yes, your homie. That's my homie right there. And he's dope. Mm-hmm. He was born in New York, raised in Philly. He styles for Jill Scott. He's also done Jasmine Sullivan. Okay. Anthony Hamilton, Tony Danza. Yeah. Yeah, 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 He's really dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. dropped his Brooklyn. fall 20, I mean his 2020 collection. Mm-hmm. And I would like all of you to go out to www.stephenkenlock, mm-hmm. spelled. Hey, right, let's spell it out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. S-T-E-V-E-N-K-I-N-L-O-C-K.com. Okay, black people, let's let's talk about. It. Did you see how easy that was? That was great. Yeah, that that that, that kept our attention, That's and right. we got to it yeah, really, yeah. really quick. That wasn't no way to go. Regina. Instagram at Stephen Kenlock. Go buy something. He's dope. Can you give um any description like uh, of the stuff that he got? Like, what did you like about it's it? It's really cutting edge and futuristic. Mm-hmm. I like it. And if you if you're bold and confident in what you wear, I think you'll like his stuff. Okay. All right, he got men's and women's stuff. Right? He does. Men yeah. and women's sizes, extra small to 2X. Okay. Regina, anything else you want to tell us about on the fashion side? You've been really fresh. I'm proud of you. Thanks. You like my books? Jodeci. <laughs> get out, <me. laughs> I did the Jodeci dance for Lee when I came she in came with my books. She came in, she hit me with the, with the, with the, out, with the sideways. <laughs> yeah, we connected, son, even though he dissed me on my song every week. How is that? You just show yourself. Yeah, like Talk about I know about hoes. I don't know nothing about hoes. You know all about them. No. I mean, vicariously through him. I don't know nothing about no oh, hoes. Oh, ho, ho. Bring it. I don't know nothing about no hoes. S-I-S. Anymore. Oh. And my <laughs> segment is called The Culture so, Thread. So next week, hey, get to it. The Culture Thread. I like that. Oh, I wonder man. how that concept was... Burr. Somebody very, very smart. Mm. Hilarious. All right. So, um, y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, man. So, so y'all to be clear, this weekend I had a, um, I don't want to call it a near death because I'm here. You know what I'm saying? But um, some things happened this weekend that um, I'd, I'd, I could easily have not been here. Um, I actually have a concussion right now and um, not real clear. Uh, they said it's going to take about a month for my head to clear back up. When um, the situation happened, the guy who actually experienced it, when he um, ran over to me, the guy said, you supposed to be here. Like, it, no way that I'm, I was supposed to walk away the way that I did from the situation that um, I went through. And um, it changes your perspective about life, you know, um, and the things that are important. Sali was the first person to get over there when, um, after everything had happened, blood was everywhere, you know, when I, I had to, to go in the ambulance. And it was just crazy, you know, the things that pop through your head when you, you see what's, you know, to go back and look at the situation and say, like, dude, I actually could not even be here anymore. It make everything else look so small. I look at how people look at sports and entertainment and how a lot of people even look down on other people because of the stuff that they do that's so trivial that don't have nothing to do with life. We're going to discuss it today, man. She can come on in. Uh, Actually, she ready? Tell them who we got, Regina. It's Dr. Ratima. 